We never looked at a report card. The effort was more important to us than the grade. Where do those expectations come from? I actually think that in the past, when they were younger, I went too far, and I kind of regret that. We had a lot of really terrible conversations and moments that like, I wish we wouldn't have had. What's my job? What's my kid's job? And what's God's job in this? The sooner you accept your kid for who they are and let go of any idea that you can change them, the sooner your anxiety tends to go away a little bit. Today, we're talking about how to protect our kids from unrealistic expectations, the standards, the shoulds, even some of the dreams that we have for them that helps us miss the unique kid that God has created right in front of us. And so that's what we're talking about today on the Live Change Podcast. I'm guest host, Kevin Mahan, here with Jason and Joanna. Hey, guys. Hey. Guest host. Glad you're here. Looking good in that seat, man. Thank you. (laughs) Chad, we miss you, bud. We do miss Chad. (laughs) I know he usually has like the Washington uh, baseball Oh, yeah, the baseball mug. And uh, it, it disappointed me. I didn't have a Detroit Tigers mug oh. for him. So what standard. mug do you have? LCBC you have LC- standard. Oh, LCBC standard. standard. I don't have a standard mug. Camping. Well, maybe it's LCBC special. It must be. <laughs> hey, so talking about expectations. Yeah. You guys ever miss expectations as parents? Unrealistic Wait, did we ever have them on us or did we yeah. ever put them on our kids? As a parent. <laughs> yeah. As a parent. Because yes. <laughs> Both probably. Never. But, no, never. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Parenting's been exactly I feel, like way, what you I feel like way too many times to count. Yes. Tell me a story. Tell me a story about a time that you've missed yeah. expectation. So it's interesting because even you had mentioned in the intro, like the unique gifts of our kids. Mm-hmm. That's where I feel like I've probably missed it the most between our two. And so even when we had our two, we have one boy, one girl. Interestingly enough, I was expecting to connect better with our daughter Mm -hmm. and I'm wired way more like our son. Mm -hmm. And so even that like simple thing has been so surprising that I feel like Finn and I, I mean, we were just on vacation and I feel like we could just sit and talk for hours in the sun anywhere. Like, don't you guys both get burned real easy? Well, we just, it's fine. Is that another (laughs) similarity? Yeah, yeah, totally. (laughs) Um, but like Junie, she like very actively on the way home is like, hey, I don't want to talk to you right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, cool. Yeah. Like I thought this was going to be different. Yeah. That's the future image you had of your daughter. Totally. We're sitting with best friends. We're, yes. Uh, yeah. So maybe still one day. Yeah. I think it also, you know, as, as you think about this thing of parenting, mm-hmm. right, we have expectations we come into with it and then we have a reality. And I, I think for me, it's regularly, Rachel and I, my wife, Rachel and I, we have three boys. And it's easy to get into the stereotype, what a boy home should be like. Mm. And then you have readers on the couch and I'm thinking, do you guys like wrestling? Cause I like <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> and then it, can we do this or not? Yeah. And who gives at that point? Right. Because I can force my kids into, no, this is how it should be. Mm-hmm. We should do this. I need to change you to do what I think we should be doing. And sometimes that's okay. Cause they need, need correction and guidance, mm-hmm. but that starts setting an expectation that maybe a miss for us as parents because it didn't live up to what I thought it could be. Yeah. Or like June, I just wish she'd let me put her hair up. Yeah. (laughs) And she's like, Nope, I like my hair all wild and crazy. Yeah. And so anyway, I mean, it's so trivial, but it's, I think it's sometimes even those like little things where you're like, huh, this is different than what I thought it was going to be like. So where do those expectations come from? Where do they come from? I would definitely say, I think upbringing, And also I think the things that you wish were different about your upbringing Mm. that then how that influences how you're trying to make it different. Mm. And so it is funny because I think sometimes, and I know full well, my parents were doing the best they could with what they had, right? Similarly to the parents that they had. And so I think it is interesting when that mixes into then how you want that to be different for your kids And then, I don't know, I feel like Kevin and I have a dynamic where then we're bringing both of our upbringings. And so then your spouse, I think that plays into it too. And so we came from different households, like most couples. And so I think then even sorting that out and then what do we want our home to be for our kids? And I think expectations and motives get kind of all tangled up that you have to like kind of sort out where it's coming from and why. And in what way? How do you sort out? I think we've just had to have just a lot of conversation around like, Hey, this thing seems really important to you. Can you help me understand why that thing seems really important? And so I know for me, I'll put on my kids, um, kind of like, I'll call it like that stick with it muscle because like, I just want our kids to, I mean, honestly, to not be quitters. Like I want them to have that stick with it muscle. 
Um, but sometimes I know I've chosen the wrong things to like force that as the expectation for that thing. And so even last fall when Finn moved up in sports age, like there was definitely a point in baseball that it was way harder, I think, than he anticipated. And I know I came in real strong armed with that stick with it muscle (laughs) that like, honestly, we had a lot of really terrible conversations Mm. and moments that like, I wish we wouldn't have had. And so I feel like that's sometimes too, where the expectations can come into play in the wrong way, where I don't even know that I felt that in the moment and was just trying to. Well, what made it the wrong way? Control that. Well, my, <laughs> there was so a few check Let's your heart vulnerable. moments. Let's in, get vulnerable here. Joanna. Yeah, there were a few check your heart moments in the parking lot where I was shouting at him, you need to play or get in the car. We're going home. So. Okay. But, but, okay. But let's back that up and I'm going to challenge that for a second. Why, why is that wrong? Um, because I don't think that, so I don't think, um, the character building we were trying to do was wrong. I okay. was coming at it totally Your approach, the wrong approach, way. Yeah, You're talking about more the approach on that. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because resilience is a value. Yeah. It's an important that he, yeah. at Finn, at 25, when the relationship didn't work out the way he thought, he's sticking to it. Yep, so you're, totally. you're coaching something good. Yeah, yeah. So, but in the moment, I feel like my motive got warped in like, oh, oh wait, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. hold on a second. You're doing this thing because I said so, and now <laughs> I want to win. <laughs> It's like, well, that's it is not subtle. entirely helpful. <laughs> it is very subtle when it crosses the line of, oh, this is probably more about me now. Right. Totally. Mm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And he's like, character. You think this is good character, mom? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Wait, did he say that? <laughs> no, but okay. I, he's he could have. smart yeah, enough he that have. he could have. Where do you think they come from? These expectations were any social influence? Do you think they all just come from us? Well, probably. Yeah. I'm sure they're social because you look around and you see what other, um, uh, you know, my kid, you know, like I'm using an example, like my kids, uh, loud and social and rambun- rambunctious or whatever it might like has lots of energy. Right. And then you look at another family and their kid sits perfectly still and, uh, you know, at the, at the school play or whatever. And there is a little bit of that social pressure about my kid doesn't behave or my kid is, behaves differently. I should say than maybe the other kids around them. And yeah, I think parents all the time internalize stuff like that. Mm-hmm. About what does it say about me as a parent? Um, all that, which then heightens our level of anxiety, which kids pick up on. It's invisible, but they are so attuned. Kids are yeah. so much more attuned to the atmosphere, yeah. emotional atmosphere than adults can be sometimes. Does that mean emotional atmosphere? Like, like if there's tension in the room. Yeah. Okay. You know, this is why when you fight with your spouse, or if you're, even if you're not really like a, a big loud fight, if there's tension between you and your wife or you and your husband, kids start cleaning the house. Kids start, totally. kids start playing or kids start misbehaving. Mm. They're picking up on the energy yeah. and that's, they know is in the air that you're refusing to address. And that, that's my, I think that's what I mean by the emotional atmosphere. They're very attuned to that. And so my point is that when you feel those subtle or maybe internal pressures sometimes of expectations, they're feeling that too. Yeah. And, um, it's our anxiety. Mm-hmm. I think that's feeding. It. Yeah. Yeah. And but, it's funny. I only laugh because like literally that just happened to us. And Junie actually said, mom, why are you mad at dad now? And, and did you think she and knew? A hundred percent. Okay. I mean, we were visibly angry, okay. yeah, yeah. but like, I don't know that I've had too many times where our kids have actually I called it out, like called it out. Yeah. And then you're like, I was like, yeah, you know what? I am a little mad at dad yeah. right now. Hey, you um, know what though? Well done because most a lot of family units don't have the environment, the emotional safety in the home for a kid to be able to voice that. Yeah. So good job with that. Thanks. And then what they do is they carry that and are anxious. They quietly, they quietly yes. carry it yeah. and they yeah. are anxious. Yeah. Are mom and dad. Okay. Are they gonna be? And you go to bed that way then. Yeah. Cause no one talked about it. Yeah. So good job. So, so far we've been really been talking about the ones, the expectations we put on things. What I find interesting as a parent is, uh, I'm six, four, my wife Rachel's six foot. And we can go to the doctor's office. It feels like a report card on the parents, right? Where mm-hmm. your kids are in the 99th percentile in height, Kevin. And I'm thinking, I'm crushing this. Yeah. I'm doing, I'm winning <laughs> so outside hard. outside of your control. It's like something so outside. Yeah, and like, yeah. it doesn't matter. It has no connection to their well being and how they're following Jesus or how I'm following Jesus as a parent. But you still feel this ego pump mm-hmm. of like, ooh, because I hit the standard. Right. right? right so right. every report card becomes about my parenting and every standard out there. And so then we also have to protect, we're talking about protecting our kids against some of this. And so it's mm-hmm. from us, but we also have to protect our kids from 
a standard that says my 10 year old needs a cell phone because he lives outside of the house sometimes after mm-hmm. school. Yeah. And, and we have to decide as a family, what do we want to hold as standards that are affirmed and standards that are just, they're just nothing. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, it's interesting. You bring up report cards. Like, I don't know that I was really expecting how I was going to feel about some of that. Now having an elementary age kid, Mm -hmm. like I grew up, grades were like very celebrated. I mean, I remember like even like every A you got, you get a dollar. Like, and I think even the way I'm wired, that perform expectation was just really drilled into me early, Mm -hmm. whether my parents really meant to or not, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like even with Finn, that's something I found myself really cautious of because like, I remember the first time I got any grade lower than an A action. And I just didn't know what to do with that. And honestly, it was probably a B minus, you know, like I was a decent student, but the, the, actually some of that anxiety around like, oh my gosh, I have to take a B B minus home to mom. Like what is going to happen that it's like funny because I feel like that is one of the things that we've tried to figure out where it's like, you know what, that expectation isn't good for our home. Like Mm. I'm not going to feed that culture. Um, but it's funny because school very much does. And Mm -hmm. so then the pressure or the expectations that school has put on our kids a little bit. I think that that, that's something that we then have to sort out. What are we as parents going to do with an expectation that we might not be the ones controlling the narrative of. Yeah, for sure. And and I can imagine too, Jason, you have a little bit older kids and I am preparing in some ways myself when my child takes their first career job, the school of choice. Like there's, there's just all these things that are consistently coming our way that are great things for my kid. It's the right choice for my kid. And I want to make sure my heart's ready to protect against an unmet expectation as I'm communicating that, as if I'm disappointed they chose something that was perfectly for them. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is just so much, I mean, on our end as parents, and by the way, this is not parents of young kids. Mm-hmm. You, you can be 65 years old listening to this right now, and you you got to deal, you got to let go of some of this for your adult children too. So, you know, um, this is just about letting you're giving people the freedom to be who they are, giving your kids the freedom. That's where the, that's the hard part. Probably where I had to learn was letting go of the expectations of results and instead focusing on the expectations of character in the process. This is the honest truth. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe I've looked at one. We never looked at a report card ever, Jenny and I. And my daughter is going to college now and my son is in high school. And, um, now they've, they're good students. So like some of that is, but because we never made it, we just kind of made a decision like we're not going to, and I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, by the way. Um, you need to do what works for you. Uh, my point is, um, the effort was more important to us than the grade. Mm-hmm. And we watched that all, we watched that every day. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so what we were monitoring was, are you studying? What we were watching is, um, are you, um, uh, giving your best effort? And if you're giving your best effort and you're making a C, I'm good. Because it's the character trait. That's what I expect. What I expect of you is to become a, a young man or a young woman um, who brings their best effort to the work they do. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, so, so at the end of the day, the results, and I just always, I, I still struggle with this a little bit, the tension between calling my kids up to something greater, mm-hmm. which I think is we all need in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and not putting an unreal, uh, a burden on them. Mm. That's a really tricky line as a parent. I, I've, I, for me, yeah. that's my wrestle. Mm. And I actually think that in the past when they were younger, I went too far. The, um, I'm not going to call them up to anything because I don't want them to feel pressure from dad. Mm. And I kind of regret that now. That's really real. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I wish I would have, um, said, Hey, you can do, and, and I've, and I've shifted that the older they've gotten, um, tried to be much more like you can accomplish, you, you've got bigger things in you, mm-hmm. you know, you can, you can, because they need that too. Yeah. And as long as they're safe, that you're going to love them, even if they don't, mm-hmm. you can push them far. You know what I mean? I think that's more the, yeah. the, if as long as it's an emotionally safe place yeah. to know that a, a C truly is not going to give me trouble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Quote unquote. Um, then I can go, a C's, you can do better than that. 
So, so I think one of the things you said too, then if I said it in my, in my way, I heard it. Um, our kids have to borrow our confidence to try something. Mm -hmm. So when we call them up, they borrow that, like, well, he thinks I can yeah. respect him. Well, they can't borrow our criticism of them yeah. to do anything. That just shut them down. The, the expectations come like, they're looking what you celebrate. Your kids want your approval. Mm -hmm. they're, it's like it's hardwired in them. And I'm talking, by the way, again, I've talked with grown men in my office, 35-year-old men who will tears streaming down their face because they want their dad's they want their dad to be proud of them. Mm -hmm. This never goes away. Okay. We have to be, that just means it's on us as parents to be, to be mindful of and wise what we celebrate. I remember when Sienna, she, she was probably 10, maybe nine, and she hit a game winning shot in basketball. And it was awesome. And you better believe I was oh, yeah. proud. Oh, yeah. But see, this is that tension again. It's like, do I celebrate too much? Cause then I don't want her feeling pressure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's so stupid. You get in your head and all this yeah. kind of stuff. It's like, and then if I don't, I leave her and go, did you not see that shot dad? Yeah. So um, anyways, when she got home, we were talking and I just like, okay, here's what I need to celebrate with her. And this is what I told her. I said, I'm so, so proud of you today. And I think it's incredible. You hit that shot. But then I said, but I want you to know, that what I'm most proud of is not that you made the shot. I'm proud that you took it hmm. because that's the character piece. Yeah. That's awesome. And you are not going to hit the next one. Yeah. You might not, you might not hit the one. That's not what I'm proud of. Yeah. What I'm proud of is you, you stood up and you took the shot. Mm -hmm. well said. And that's what I'm saying. Like they're look, like, what are you celebrating in me and affirming? Because then the expectation comes, my dad does expect me to take the shots. Mm -hmm. He doesn't expect me to make everyone. Yeah. So I think it's just important to, I mean, everything we say and do matters and, mm -hmm. and we're communicating something and certainly got it wrong a ton on this yeah. one. Um, but I think if we can keep our, Jenny and I have always just tried to feel like, man, if we can celebrate the, keep it on the character aspect, mm -hmm. that's way more important than the outcome. Outcomes just take care of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I think you just answered this, Jason. And then do I'd be interested in your thought on this too. So if we're not aiming at these unrealistic expectations, either coming from us, our past or somebody else, like what are we aiming at as parents? Mm -hmm. And so you're, you've locked into character. I think there's obviously some, some biblical guidance on this, but Joanna, I've heard you talk about values too. Yeah. So what, what do you aim at as a parent and, yeah. um, and how we stay focused on those things? Yeah. It's interesting. I don't know. Somewhere along the way we got discontent with tr just trying to have good kids. We as in Kevin and I, yeah, because I think we just have, we've been trying to remind ourselves, we're actually trying to raise functioning adults. And so I don't know. I think then along mm. the way that's changed how we do things, right? Where it's like, Hey, I want a functioning adult and actually bonus if we want to be friends with them <laughs> when they're older. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, versus just having a good kid because good kids just felt even so limiting to what actually what you just said that we were trying to call them into. Yep. Um, and then, I don't know, I think just with our story a little bit um, and I've shared here, but so we had Finn, we had two losses in between and then we had Junia. And I just think for me personally, God did a really big work in my heart mm -hmm. that these kids are not my kids. Mm -hmm. And there was like a season of even release that I feel like I had to kind of walk through with our miscarriages that really did change my perspective on even just how we steward our kids. And so again, like I would say, like to what Jason said, that doesn't mean we get it right all the time, Yeah. but to recenter on that aim of like, wait a second, this is like such a small blip in the radar or like in the, the trajectory of trying to get them to adulthood that like, I don't need to sweat this mistake we made. Like I just need to recenter and like do better next time. Um, Versus feeling like every single moment is like the end all be all for like having good kids. I love that. I think, I think, um, and man, if more people, I think kept that vision in mind that you're not raising children, you're raising adults. I do think that that changes the way that you begin, you, you begin to engage with them differently. In fact, yeah. I, this just happened. Uh, one of my kids was asking for something the other day and I did something I never do. I just said, no. And that was it. End of conversation. And Jenny was even, she was like, we never do that. So <laughs> what are you doing, man? Yeah, kind of. And, and, and I was going to go back to him, but that was encouraged. Like, I, so I went back and I just said, Hey, 
I never do that. So we always, we always talk about why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And because I think that's more important that my kids understand what's behind the, what, what is what's in my heart for them. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so, but that's our attempt. Like, that's that kind of like, I need you to know it because the why will serve you when you're 30. Totally. And, um, I can just tell you no, and I can raise a good kid. Mm-hmm. The why behind it begins to help shape your heart yeah. a little bit. And whether or not you choose it later, I'm helping you at least mature in that sense. Um, mm-hmm. So the, the other thing I was thinking about the Proverbs, I got a couple of Proverbs written down here, but one of them is Proverbs 22. And you're talking about kind of the intent and the aim mm-hmm. and Proverbs is this, this book of wisdom. And we got to remember when I read this, remember Proverbs are principles, not promises. Okay. So in other words, they're generally true, but they're not promises. Like every single time this is going to, it's not a, it's not a magic incantation book, but it is like a, Hey, in general, this is how life mm-hmm. works right and works best. Um, and so anyways, it's important to remember that when you read this, but, but here's what, or hear this, what, here's what it says, direct this is Psalm 22, six, direct your children onto the right path. And when they're older, they will not leave it. Now have some left it. You do, yeah, of course. That's mm-hmm. again, in principle though, what, what the proverb is saying is at the end of the day, what we want is we want adults. Mm-hmm. This is the, when they are older piece, yep. um, who, uh, honor God, <laughs> follow Jesus and understand what it means to love God and love others, right? Mm-hmm. And, and at the end of the day, that's what we're wanting. And then you got all the ancillary stuff then beyond that, which is, uh, well, again, I guess everything falls under love God and love others, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. It's because if they're loving others, they're going to be honest. They're going to be respectful. So all that to say, I feel like at the end of the day, that's what I'm trying. That's what we are trying to do as parents is to do that. So, mm-hmm. and then the question just becomes how, but, but I think that's the aim. Like if yeah. I want my kids to leave, that's ultimately, I want my kids to get out of the house mm-hmm. yeah. and to be God honoring adults. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, I'm not in control of that at the end of the day, mm-hmm. but I can set the stage for it. It's kind of like I can put the plates out, but they got to eat. So it's my job to just put, put the plates out while, while they're under my authority. So, so I wonder if you guys would have something to say to the parents. That's, that's really good. It certainly is for that stage of life. And as the stages progress, the aim has to change. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I wonder if you guys would have something to say to a parent who may be not experiencing what they hoped they would as an adult parent. Yeah. And they have to now figure out what's my aim. Cause I, I talk to people as a pastor, I talk to people all the time. The grief and the loss comes from it's not what I thought it was going to be. And I'm having to grapple with a level of loss later in life mm-hmm. that I never thought would be true about us. Yeah. I, what, do you, what, do you, what do they aim at? And you guys know this at our church, there, there are so many people that came to faith later in life. And they're starting to get their heart oriented around how to follow God as, an, yeah. as a 34-year-old. And they're looking at raising their teenager who is far from Christ because they didn't raise them to follow Christ. Mm-hmm. And so now they're the wrestling with, I can't treat my teenager like a toddler, make them come to church. Mm -hmm. And, and I have to do this new thing, but I'm becoming somebody new as they watch me. And one of the tools I found very, very helpful in some of those pastoral conversations, even though I haven't lived this out is I I have lived out trying to do something that was not my job to do as a parent. Mm -hmm. It's God's job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it was their job as the kid. And so just simply one of the tools I use pretty regularly to help get my anxiety in the right spot and do the right work is to write a list of, Hey, in this situation, what's my job? What are you in control? of? Yeah. What's, what's their yeah. job? What's my kid's job? Yeah. And what's totally. God's job in this? And I slowly realized that, that God loves them so much more than I've ever known them or could love them. And so if I do believe the scriptures that he will be faithful to create them in a way that they can understand and know his voice and he will pursue them and chase them. I can be faithful that my job is not to be God's job in their voice mm-hmm. or God's yeah. voice in their life. I love that. Yeah. I actually also appreciate you use the word anxiety in the, in the middle of that. Sure. Because anxiety is essentially a, right. I mean, it's a, it's a, uh, an incessant, I'm going to, this is not clinical, but I mean, it's an incessant worrying about a future hypothetical. It hasn't even happened yet. And um, the sooner you accept your kid for who they are, and let go of any, uh, any idea that you can change them, the sooner your anxiety tends to go away a little bit. And 
you can finally just accept them for the kid you have in front of you, mm-hmm. 35 years old or five. And I'm not saying that I'm not pretending that's easy. I'm trying to say that is though the only path to get there. And so that what you're doing is a let accepting what am I in control of? What am I responsible for? And what, what ultimately we talk about at our church. Um, some of you have been around, you've probably heard us say like, God, they're yours to change their mind to love mm-hmm. that at the end of the day, that what am I responsible? For? I've got to love them for who they are. Yeah. And the second someone begins to pick up, your kid begins to pick up, you're loving for who you want. You're loving me for who you want me to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a big statement. It's, it's, it's defeating. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah. um, it's, it's, that's a, that's an, a very strong, uh, hard burden to carry. And kids pick up on that. And, um, and, 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 and we're not, honestly, I mean, that's what God has to do in our heart. There's a, there's a, um, a verse in Ephesians where Paul's talking to parents and he says this at one point, he says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. He actually says, uh, or another translation says, don't exasperate your children. And when I hear that word exasperate, I think of tired. I think of nagging. I think of, um, uh, always on them, always checking up, always trying to push them towards uh, and and so many times, and this is in the Bible that we just read, because I think part of what Paul knows is that the more you see your kids sometimes straying, the more fear kicks in yeah. in you. And because of that, our inclination is to, instead of trusting God, God, they're yours to change your mind and love, we will try to control the situation. And you cannot control someone and love them at the same time. It's yeah. not possible. Yep. And, 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 and I don't mean you don't love them implicitly. I'm, I mean act in a loving way. You'll act in a anxious, fearful, controlling way. Yeah. And that, what Paul's saying is exasperates them. Yeah. That actually leads to more rebellion or yeah. pushing away or running away from it. But what draws them back is the emotional safety of a home to go, when I'm ready to come back, I know that I'll be loved here because I know that they've loved me this moment. And again, I'm not pretending this easy, but if you're yeah. a follower of Jesus, you have the spirit of God living in you to empower you to do these things. Yeah. So it's not easy. And this is a work that God has to do in us. So much of this is God breaking our anxieties mm-hmm. and our fears um, because so much of it's rooted in that. When I'm putting burdens on my children, if I come back to it, Joanna, you mentioned this earlier, it's really kind of about me. Mm-hmm. I'm scared about what other people will think yep. if my kids, I'm scared about um, what the, uh, you know, I feel ashamed uh, because I yelled, I, I feel all these kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Now it's not even about the kid anymore. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes too, it's easy to feel like it's well-intentioned because you care so much for them. And so I think that sometimes too, where that hazy tension line comes into play, I think especially sometimes with adult kids that um, yeah, it can be easy where it's like, I just want them to be safe or I just want them to have this burden removed, or I'm going to try to control things around them so they get better or come back. Um, And so I think sometimes it's just hard because I think sometimes it looks fuzzy where it's like, wait, isn't that a good thing that I'm trying to do? It's coming Uh, from a great place. I want this good thing for them. Yeah. And so I think that that's like also just hard to sort through and a really real thing um, to have to carry. I'm curious from you guys, how do you delineate? So practically, right? Let's make this really helpful. Um, because I think we all feel this burden. We've experienced it. We're, we're helping protect our kids from other standards. How do you determine, is this a good goal for my kid? Is this a thing I really should be leaning into? And, or this is, this is not something good for them. Mm-hmm. How do you distinguish between them? Mm-hmm. Are you talking about interests they have or, or like, what's an example? You know, I think like a healthy standard for our kids is, oh, this is a great example. Okay. So the other day I, um, I always grew up with this narrative that I was a little lazy and mm. I think it comes from the sports world. So I was highly involved in sports. I played sports um, a bunch. Rise and grind. You know, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. like, it's like you all, you hit it uh-huh. and don't celebrate it. You just be the standard. Yeah. You don't hit yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like there's always a standard. Um, and so that was how I led myself to, to do stuff. And then I would watch my friends who would do more in the summer than I did. So they come into season more in shape. Mm. Just can't get my act together in the summers. Can't do this. Uh, fast forward to two weeks ago, right? And we're getting back from vacation. It's that day of transition where you have to remind your kids of like, 
hey, we have real life is about to start. Our, ho- no. our house, yeah, yeah we have rules. Not live by for two weeks, right? <laughs> And so uh, one of my kids loves basketball. So we got to shoot some shots and he's got this goal. He wants to hit 75 shots. And so we're going to shoot. And it's a ton of fun because he's not like a goals kid. He set this goal and yep. I'm like trying to help him. And yep. so it's a, coming from a great spot. And my two other kids were supposed to be doing something else. It, um, they come and sit in the grass and watch us. And I lost it. And I reminded them that we're not lazy people. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. It's, teaching. it's a teaching we moment are, for oh, me. I was like, oh man, my dad skills are coming to, I'm ready for this. Right. And halfway through talking at them and them zoning out and the the, ang- the emotional intensity I brought was way overboard, way overboard. Mm. It was like, they needed grace and to figure out it's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, back to this thing. Mm-hmm. I missed the moment. And at the end of it all, we finally home, we sit down for dinner. I look at Rachel and she knew I just didn't do my job well. And, uh, as I'm talking to the boys, I'm slowly realizing the word lazy keeps coming up and I'm projecting my 13 year old expectations on my kids. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. Like, and they're like, dad, we just wanted to come watch you. <laughs> like we just wanted to be in your presence. I thought I want we to be were just going to cheer yeah. you guys on. You know? So there's like, we, all the stories we've been telling are kind of this balance between yeah. how do I differentiate between this is a good standard to teach. Yeah, and this yeah. is about me. So give me some practical stuff. Oh man. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, a very first filter, if you're, again, if you're a follower of Jesus, our very first filter is the scriptures, the word of God. And so I want my, I mean, I want the standards of the fruits of the spirit, mm-hmm. love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, gentleness. Mm-hmm. I want those to be, I want to, now there's a trick with this, which is fruits of the spirit means um, we can't force that. Mm-hmm. You know, an apple tree just makes apples, but you do create the soil for it to thrive. And so mm. I do think that there's, I, I think I want it to be aligned with, again, what did the proverb say? Direct your children the right path when they're old. So I want it to be aligned with the right path, the godly direction. To me, that's my, I, I think that's our, as Christians, our first filter. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I can push. If they're falling off the path, hey, I'm responsible in some ways too. Well, you've been direct. given, yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, you've been given, as a mom and a dad authority in your home to, to direct on the right path. And when you see it off, um, to, to push back onto that. And I think the way that, um, you know, and I think we gotta be careful. We don't blame God for things sometimes. So, so in other words, it's like, well, God wouldn't be happy if he saw that, you know what I mean? Like I've seen mm-hmm. people do that before. Um, you know, or you, that made Jesus sad, you know, it's almost like, wait, um, Rewind. Don't put God, yeah, you just yeah. don't want to be bad cop. Right. And and think about what you just made, the image of just hand of Jesus. Like he's just there to make sure you keep the rules. You gotta be real careful about that. But you can, I think there is a way of saying, man, God has something greater for our lives. Um, so we're gonna be um so so Solomon, I'll do this every now and then. I'll talk about Mitchell men. Right? It's kind of what you were talking mm-hmm. about. And the other day I was doing this with him. Now it wasn't a tense moment, like there wasn't a corrective moment. It was actually a it's a fun moment. That's good. Which I think that might, that's, that's so also different. another, like find yeah. the moments that are uh, non-tense to affirm those values. Their ears are open. Their ears are open at that yeah. point. You're, you're not being corrective. Mm-hmm. And um, so anyways, we were talking, I was like, oh, Mitchell, and for some reason, I don't know how we're talking about, I guess we're talking about mom, um, Jenny, sorry. And um, I'd have gotten her flowers or something. And, and I remember just saying, hey, so what Mitchell men do, we honor women. What Mitchell men, we take care of, you have God gives you a white, you're going to take care. You're going to honor the women in your life. We make sure we talk respectfully to them. He's like, Oh, I mean, like, you know, he's six, but my point is I need to say that. And there is an expectation that comes with that. Yeah. So if I hear you, if I hear Solomon talking to a girl, like, you know, in a disrespectful or his mom, let's go there. Mm-hmm. And say, yeah, we're going to, we're going to correct that. Mm-hmm. The other thing is we got to remember stages, right? There's aspects with Solomon who's six that is very different than my 18 year old. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with a six year old, I don't need to, you remember how I was talking earlier about the wise? Mm -hmm. I don't need to take a ton of time on the wise. Like you're not going near the road. If you go near the road, you're getting, you know, you're, you're you're going to time out like no counting. Right. Um, so there's time for just, this is the expectation and this is the rules and all that. I guess we're getting into rules a little bit, but, um, and you don't really need to explain it. I just think if you don't change that and you're still at 18 treating them like, yeah, it's not working. 
No, that that yeah. won't work. Yeah. So, um, anyways, those are some of the thoughts. Yes, I think as so I think about some of this other thing. Go back to the path metaphor, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm, we're, my kid's walking on the path. I'm trying to send them in the right direction, and I hear some parents feel obligated that every time they step off, they have to say something. Mm-hmm. Where my my kid is living in a way that's not honoring God. And so yeah. every conversation, I remind them they're not aligned, right? And it can become an overbearing thing. So there is a tension that's exasperating. you're talking about. Yeah. 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 So I'm just pointing out the tension of like, yeah, we yeah. have a God-given responsibility to help correct and guide. That's mm-hmm. a standard. But at the same time, not feel so, in, I'm going to say we're embarrassed. I feel embarrassed sometimes by my kid's behavior. Mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. it reflects on me. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so I have to correct them quickly. I've mm-hmm. got to shape them Honestly, like yeah. now you have to like shut it down as fast as possible. And I totally forget God is so on a different timeline. Yeah, and He's been so gracious to me to correct over time because mm-hmm. uh, He's not embarrassed about me. Like yeah. He's He's in it for me. Um, yeah, He's not in it for how God feels about Himself. Today. Yeah, and it's so. interesting you said rules because I do think that rules and expectations sit somewhere near each other, but don't always have to be like combined. And so mm-hmm. it's funny a couple. I mean, I guess it was probably a couple of years ago. Um, a friend of mine was like, man, it sounds like your house has a lot of rules. And that was really challenging. Cause mm. I don't think like I'm a rule follower. I don't know that I felt like Kevin and I had a lot of rules for our home, but I think what you even mentioned around, like whether it's nagging or like Kevin, you said like every little thing needs correction. I probably feel that sometimes mm. because it's like, oh man, so if we don't correct this thing, then they're going to think that's okay. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it's going to get way worse. It's right. Out of control. Trains right. down the tracks. Yeah. yeah. And so even Jason, I've heard you talk about this before where like you kind of have to figure out what are the pillars yeah. or like what are the non-negotiables around mm. how we behave and how we don't or the rules of engagement in our home that it's funny because now like parenting Junie, so our kids are five years apart. And so sometimes I feel like we're in two different stages all the Mm. time um, where I'm actually glad we reset some of that because like she is very triggered by rules and then completely shuts down and gets stubborn and Mm -hmm. um, all of her sassy self. Um, And so anyway, like I think that that's really helped us even try to evaluate, wait, is this a rule that's helpful or harmful Mm -hmm to us or to Junie, or is it like a character shaping expectation Mm -hmm. thing that we just need to reframe because the rule isn't doing the trick. Um, And so anyway, I think rules and expectations can get entangled in a weird way too, where again, I think that that's just a false sense of trying to control when really the goal is like the conversations and the, um, yeah, the character building stuff that like, we hope our kids lean into, that's what they're going to take with them. Mm. Not a bunch of rules in like, Oh, well at mom and dad, like they never let us do this. So now that I'm a grown up, I can do whatever I want. Um, that's like not helpful. Yeah. yeah and we shouldn't paint expectations as if they're negative expectations yeah. help you make it in the world. Yeah. Like living up to social norms and social expectations. Mm-hmm. Like there are rules of engagement socially <laughs> that if I'm a jerk, totally the group puts me on the outside. So I'm expected not to be a jerk. Okay. That's a good, like you should learn that. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh man, I just, so we should also just um, not paint them as they're, you know, uh, all, all bad. I think the, the tension is just, when do we can, when do we create unnecessarily heavy burdens around them? Yes. I think. And that's that, that's when, when does it cross the line to being exasperating Mm -hmm. to the, to the Ephesians passage? Yeah. I think you guys give covered a lot of things. A lot mm-hmm. of content. Anything else practically you had? Heard? I would just say practically too. It's funny. I jotted a note. <laughs> I'm also an avid reader. Like I love to read parenting books. Mm-hmm. Some people think that's weird. I don't know. Um, but I say that to say, I think sometimes you also have to figure out what does Do serve. Do people really think that's weird? Um, yeah. If probably if you read too many of them about too many things, I don't know. Okay. Um, but that seems like a pretty good thing to me. <laughs> Well, but you have to take, so I think the danger in that is you have to take what's helpful and leave the rest. Oh, okay. Because I also think some of that with expectations is like, then if, like, if I were to leave this conversation today and be like, oh man, so then if Jason does it like this in their house and the Mayhans do it like this in their house, oh, then Kevin and I have to do this in our house. Um, And so anyway, I would just say practically speaking too, like be in conversation with your spouse or someone else that you trust, especially if you're a single parent listening, like do this Mm -hmm. in community and figure out, Hey, what really is best for my household 
for my kids, for the way that I'm wired, yeah. um, because otherwise you're kind of back to square one and like just picking up a bunch of expectations and like how to parent better when really it's like, actually, how do I be in tune with like how God's calling me to lead my kids and how then I feel like I'm called to steward mine. Um, and so anyway, I think yeah. practically speaking, you can also get tripped up with too much information around how you think it should look. Um, and so anyway, I know I can fall into that trap also, sometimes. Yeah. So God has obviously given us unique kids. You know, there is no such thing as a perfectly standard or normal child. Yeah. And you have been entrusted as a parent, no matter what age to love and guide them to his heart. And so as a life change, it's always a challenge to say how I'm growing is going to be replicated. And so if we continue to grow and they follow in our footsteps too, we can trust that God will do his work in their heart and their life. And so today, um, as we're closing down this conversation, no perfect parents allowed, right? No, no we did not good. hit the expectations perfectly. We are wrestling through some of every season changes, new expectations come, but ultimately we can trust that God is a God of it all. And he is a God of our kids and he loves our kids and he's to be trusted in that. So, Absolutely. So as always, like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. If this has been helpful for you, man, tell somebody about it today. And so remember that because your life changed by Christ, go live that out.